I'm Marie and I'm from Child Care Aware of North Dakota and today we're going to talk about active listening. How many of you start your day by Sally coming to school and she wants to tell you about everything she did last night and she's like Miss Marie I went to the river and I got to go play with my friends and so and so came over and she's so excited but then Johnny comes over and Johnny's like Miss Marie, guess what I got to do last night? And they both just start talking at the same time and they're like, blah, 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 and you have no idea what they're even about to say, right? And you're just throwing your hands up and you're completely done with it. Well, today we're gonna stop and we're gonna take a deep breath and we're gonna reflect on how can we listen to all of our students and really connect to them by listening and engaging to what they really have to tell us. Active listening is extremely important in a child care setting. Interactions and connections are key to positive behaviors within your classroom. Active listening will improve those interactions and connections you have with each and every child within your environment. There are three A's to be a, an effective active listener. The first one is your attitude. How do you feel at the time? Are you positive? Or are you negative? A positive attitude leads to positive listening. You also need to be very attentive. Are you engaged in the conversation? Are you getting down at the child's level in order to make that eye contact and be face to face with that child? By fully engaging in the conversation, you will be able to listen to a complete thought instead of adding extra stuff of your own trying to make the conversation work. And that just leads us to adjustment. We often struggle with adjustment. We need to remember to go with the conversation. Don't take control of the conversation thinking that you know what the child might say. Instead, let them lead the way and let them tell you exactly what they want to say instead of jumping ahead and putting your words into their conversation. There are five stages to listening. The first one is receiving the information. Make sure you're listening to the speaker. Get down to the child's level once again to show them that you're really interested in their conversation and they have your full attention. Understanding is the next stage. That is where you comprehend the meaning of the message and ask any questions that you might have to make sure that you're perceiving the message correctly. Then you need to evaluate the information. Is it organized? Is it valid? Is it even truthful? Those are questions you need to ask yourself in order to make connections within your brain to make the information make sense. Then we need to respond to the speaker. Ask the child questions, give them feedback of what is being said and what is being heard. If you continue to respond, evaluate, understand, and receive all the messages and words that the child is trying to perceive to you, you will be able to remember that message. And that is key to continuing the conversation with the child. Have you ever had a child speaking to you in your classroom and like five other kids want to talk to you at the same time? What do you do? How do you show them that you want to hear their stories as well, but you need to finish listening to this child first because that's also important. Some of the ways that I have found is to hold up one finger. This tells the child to please wait, your turn will be next. Another example would be holding up your hand high and flat to show a stop sign. That shows them stop, please wait without interrupting the other speaker. Sometimes all it takes is a smile with eye contact, pointing at your ear, telling them that you're listening to their friend. Some children are very persistent. At that moment, you just need to simply state, please wait, I'm listening to, and then state their friend's name. These nonverbal cues can be taught during circle time so the children know what they mean and know they're not being ignored. They'll eventually get a turn and have your undivided attention as well. After reflecting on what active listening really is, how do you feel your classroom should look? Do you think it should look how we started this video? Probably not, that was a little crazy. Instead, maybe Johnny comes in in the morning and says, hey, Miss Marie, guess what? Tommy got to come over to my house and play today. 
And while he's telling me the story, Sally might come in and she's so excited too. But I can remember to give her that stop sign or just that simple smile. And she'll stand here and wait while Johnny finishes his story. And I can reflect on what Johnny is saying. Let's see how that's done. Hey, Miss Marie, guess what happened at school or at home today? What, Johnny? Well, Tommy was able to come over and play cars with me. Tommy got to come over and play cars with you at your house? Yeah, isn't that exciting? That is so exciting. I bet you guys had so much fun. Good morning, Sally. I see you're over here too. Were you listening to Johnny's conversation that Tommy got to go play with him yesterday? Yeah, and guess what I got to do? What did you get to do? Well, I got to go over to my friend's house yesterday and we played Barbies. You got to play Barbies together? Yeah, I like to play Barbies too. Did you see how they were able to listen to each other's stories? and make those connections and be able to start a conversation between the two of them, that is actively listening and engaging that social, emotional conversation. I hope this has helped. You guys have a great day.